All right, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I want to thank the uh, city officials, community, and labor leaders uh, joining us here today. Uh, Department of Public Health Commissioner Dr. Alice Narwitty, um, Alderman uh, Gil Viegas, uh, SCAU Local 1 Vice President Ephraim Elias, and Carmen Varega, uh, Chief Operations Officer of Esperanza Health Centers. Four weeks ago, we came together to announce the significant disparities um, that our cities experience uh, with respect to COVID-19 cases and deaths. At that time, Chicago's African Americans accounted for over half of our city's cases and 70% of our city's deaths. Those findings were breathtaking and led us to take immediate action. This included forming our racial equity rapid response team a data-driven effort deploying a hyper-local strategy to mitigate the dis disparate outcomes in our communities, ramping up our communications, organizing community-level briefings with residents, supporting on-the-ground efforts to disseminate masks, and connecting residents to information and resources so that they could access essential care and support. But our work continues. And we have reached another critical moment for our city confronting the impact of COVID-19 on Chicago's Latinx community. With increased testing, improved reporting, and the continued spread of this terrible virus, we are seeing a surge in cases amongst our Latinx residents. And this demands that we dig down deeper and work harder to confront this reality. Now, I'm gonna invite Dr. Arwady to break down the data in a moment, but this is what we're looking at. Four weeks ago, our Latinx community um, accounted for only 14% of cases and 19% of deaths. Now, we've been working in the Latinx communities um, all along, but we noted four weeks ago that we worried about an undercount. Fast forward to today, and those levels have more than doubled, with Latinx individuals now accounting for 37% of Chicago's COVID-19 cases and 25% of our city's deaths. No less breathtaking than the numbers that we reported on a month ago in the black community. And unfortunately, those numbers are on the rise. As Dr. Artie will note, this new data is due in part to our increased texting capacity. Meanwhile, some of it is due to better data collection following our public health order, which we issued in the wake of last month's um, data release, requiring more accurate case data reporting related to race and ethnicity. Now, we haven't reached where we should um, be. We still have to press providers to, uh, uh, to make sure that we're getting this important information. But the fact that we are getting more people coming into compliance shows that the impact of this virus on communities of color. Um, the maps we have here tell another familiar story. It's a story about resources and inequality, about health care access, job access, and community investment. Dynamics we know all too well in our city. When looking at data at this scale, it's easy to forget but we cannot, that these aren't just numbers, they are our people, their families, their parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, friends and loved ones who are sick and afraid for their lives. These are our neighbors. And that's nothing to say of the suffering and worry of the families and loved ones of these individuals. I will speak about the actions we'll be taking to address the challenges we're facing, both near term and long term. And, I'll, uh, and how they'll be tailored to the lived experience of this community. We're not doing a one-size-fits-all approach to addressing the ravages of this virus. But first, I'd like to invite Dr. Arwady to the podium to walk us through the data and show us uh, what's happening. 